Hey, what's up? Hello everyone, welcome into Fantasy Film Ball, the show where we turn movies into sports and sports into something we don't talk about here. My name is Matt. My name is Dill. Today, we are talking Chevalier, because it's finally been like seven months, and we finally get to talk about this, because you saw this all the way back at TIFF. I have been waiting for so long to talk about this movie, Dylan, because I have known all along you were going to love this movie. Hopefully, I remember enough about this to talk about it. We are going to go into spoiler territory because we have both seen this. If you haven't seen it, turn off the video and come back afterwards. Kelvin Harrison Jr. is one of my favorite working actors right now. First saw him in Waves, Lou Cyrano. Well, guess what? He's even better in this movie because he's finally getting to take on a real life figure, but in the leading role because we've seen him to do this in supporting roles in like Trial of the Chicago 7, Elvis. But you know, here he's great and I'll go more into his performance here in a little bit, but Matt, like we mentioned before, you saw this movie like seven, eight months ago. I don't know how long it's been since TIFF. So I guess how were your initial thoughts and how have they changed over time? When I first saw this movie at TIFF, I was really blown away by the visuals. It is such a, a gorgeous looking film in the production design, the costume design, and the camera work. Afterwards, I looked up the director to see what else he'd done, and he has done a lot of stuff with HBO, including he directed a few episodes of their Watchmen series, which makes a lot of sense when you see how gorgeous the visuals in this movie are. Overall, I really just liked learning about a slice of history that I was completely unaware of. It's really cool to see someone like Bologna here, who is dug up from history and shown to an audience saying, hey, isn't this person awesome? Isn't it crazy that you've never learned that this person existed before? I really appreciate indulging to a story that, as you mentioned, of someone we don't really know about because Joseph Bologna was basically erased from history for centuries and his story's finally being rediscovered now. And I thought that Kelvin Harrison Jr. just portrayed him so confident, so bold. You could kind of make this character seem like a jerk at times, but I don't think Harrison ever does that. Like, he knows he's good, and he shows it, but he also knows when to be nice and when to be caring. What did you think about the rest of the cast? Because I didn't think anyone else really came that close to him. I agree that Harrison plays this character in, in a very confident way. Uh, very bold way. He, he never seems arrogant. What he does seem like is he is fighting for his place in this world. He knows that no one is going to give him what he knows he deserves, so he needs to fight for it at every single moment. In terms of the other cast members, I just really don't remember anyone. I couldn't even name another cast member. Part of this is the impact of seeing this eight months ago. There are things that are just vanishing from my mind. The things that I felt most strongly about are still remaining. I don't remember who else is in the cast. Samara Weaving was his love interest. I thought she was okay. That's where some of my faults with this movie comes with, but we'll talk about that in a little bit. The rest of the cast had some actors and actresses that I may recognize their faces, but their names would not pop up to me. However, I did very much appreciate that opening Mozart scene, maybe not so much for the actor being Mozart, but I thought it was a great introduction into this world, into the tone of seeing how Joseph is so bold, so talented, so confident, and he's willing to get up in front of a stage and just basically blow away what is often regarded as the greatest in their field and shows like, hey, actually, this guy, he's pretty good. You shouldn't, you know, take him not serious. In addition to that scene, I love the the technical aspects of this movie because like we know the music's going to be great. So like the sound, it, it, it's amazing. But the costumes, they were very lush. They reminded me of his previous work in Cyrano. The production design was not jaw dropping, but I thought it was very well done setting you into the tone of this world. And you mentioned a little bit before about the director. I thought the editing choices of this were very great with some of those seamless transitions where like you cut from like the action happening here and like you pan down and like to the right and then you're into the next scene whether you're going through like a glass painting or the sheets or clothing or whatever it was i just felt like this movie had very good pace to keep you engaged and enthralled throughout its i think pretty short runtime i think it was just under two hours well, if we're mentioning that Mozart scene at the very beginning, we have to talk about the cinematography of that scene, the way that the camera just floats between the two of them as they're dueling on the violins. What incredible work. And I think through the entire film, the camera work kind of just, is it's very well lit, 
but it's the movement of the camera that feels so dynamic that keeps you so engaged in the film. As I mentioned before, I do have some negatives here, and that would mainly be the stuff outside of his art, outside of his music. While I get it's very needed to tell the story of who Joseph was, that you need some of his family stuff, his romantic stuff, I thought that part of the plot was very rushed through with the drama with his mother, with him rediscovering his family culture. She kind of pops in. I would say like between like the halfway and three four smarts of this movie and it has about like five minutes of screen time where you like you like get like hey he's reconnecting but we don't really get to see it progress very much i also didn't think the romantic connection between harrison and weaving was at like a 10 like obviously these are two very talented actors but i didn't really feel like there was much like selling me like hey these two people would like fall head over heels when they're being told from everyone you can't do this and i did think the antagonist of her husband was kind of half-baked at times like i don't really feel like there was any drama there outside of he's racist guy he does racist things but there was nothing really added to it i really like this movie i also there are things that pull me back from really loving this movie as we've talked about the technical elements are incredible kelvin harrison jr does a great job with this but it is a period drama, and despite the fact that what Kelvin is bringing to the role, what the texts are bringing to the film in general, kind of spurs the idea that this is a revolutionary film, it's still a historical drama, and it still suffers from a lot of the same issues that a lot of very boring period dramas suffer from. It just gets caught up in so much of the politics of the time, so much of the stuffy period drama stuff. That is really tough when you have a film that's trying to present itself as revolutionary, present itself as uh, fresh and bold and exciting and incendiary when the script feels like any other period drama that you've seen. That's a downside to it. The script didn't have that same revolutionary, incendiary energy that it seemed like the rest of the film wanted to bring to it. I see this all the time in these period dramas that are trying to be like, we're gonna reinvent history, we're going to present a, an entirely new image of what history is, and you're gonna love this, it's not gonna be like any of those old ones that you've seen. The only film that I think has successfully done that is The Favourite by Yorgos Lanthimos. Every other film that tries, I think, still falls into the some, some of the same traps that makes these, this genre kind of boring to watch, mm -hmm. kind of cliche. I think this movie succeeds at its most the first 15 to 20 minutes and the last 15 and 20 minutes. I think the middle part of this movie is where it's brought down a little bit because you get the monotonous love story, you get the family affairs, you get the, the stuff that you normally get in your period dramas. But that first... 15, 20 minutes as we see the rise of Joseph, we have that face off of uh, Mozart. We have him going to the school, showing his talents, proving his worth, and getting his title of the Chevalier. And in the last 15 minutes is when he essentially loses that bid and has to make a decision of where he stands politically, where he stands with his family, and where he stands with the French Revolution. And I feel like those two sections have that innovative and that boldness that you were talking about. But we are in Oscars channel, and this movie did have some awards buzz once upon a time, but it did get tagged with an April release date from Searchlight, which is not a great sign of confidence to predict it in, you know, really any category, but we both spoke very highly of its text. So I guess my question to you is, do you think this makes a short list, or is this destined to become a new member of the This Head Oscar Buzz Club? People are going to say... It's an April release, but you know what else was an April release? Everything, everywhere, all at once. But the thing that's different is that this is Searchlight, and we know Searchlight is going to prioritize in a very old-fashioned way. They are going to put the movies that they think have awards chances in their prime October, November, and December release slots. That's just how Searchlight operates, and the Oscars are not really they they don't value everything based on merit it is about what is most seen and it doesn't seem like searchlight is going to push behind this it reminds me a lot of a little film called the personal history of david copperfield and that one also premiered at tiff and then was not released that year it was released in the following april some people said personal history of david copperfield could get a costume design nomination or a production design nomination it ended up with neither and I think we're going to see the exact same thing happen to Chevalier, where some people will say maybe it can happen, but in the end, 
Searchlight just has other priorities. Its best chance would be in that costume department. However, looking up its costume designer, Oliver Garcia, who is a newer name on the scene, does not have many credits to his name. Thought the work was great here. But to be a very early release, you kind of need to have a bigger name designer attached to you to stick through the whole season as we saw last year with Jenny Beavins with Mrs. Harris Goes to Paris. That movie stuck out the whole season, but it's probably because a movie about fashion on top of being someone who is beloved by the category. Well, like I mentioned before, Garcia's work is great. He's not really a big name at the moment, so I don't think this film will stick out the whole year. But as you mentioned, it's not always about merit. This film's great, Oscar nominations aside. But everyone out there, if you haven't watched it, I don't know why you stuck out through this whole review. But if you have watched it, let us know what you think down below. But until next time, my name is Dill. And my name is Matt, and this is Fantasy Film Ball.